Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. Yep, and that's why we're here today. Welcome to Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, the podcast where we watch the HBO show Watchmen. I am Scott. I'm Sam. And this is the show for season one, episode eight. A God walks into a bar. Sam, before we get into everything, why don't you tell the good people where they can find us? House cleaning. House cleaning. House cleaning. House cleaning. House cleaning. Uh, yes. All right, so. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Find us on NerdCyclopedia.com where you see all our links to all our different channels. Um, make sure that you're um, following us on all your social media outlets, NerdCyclopedia.com. I'm sorry, at NerdCyclopedia on you know, Instagram, Facebook, and um, um, Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you're joining our Facebook group. Yes. Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen um, on Facebook. Make sure that you are subscribing to our podcast on or your podcast or your, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, where they're App, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify. We are where, where you need to be to listen to us. Yes. Um, make sure that you're leaving feedback at watching Watchmen at NerdCyclopedia.com. Um, follow me and Scott <laughs> right down here, you know. <laughs> and most of all, make sure that you're subscribing. Subscribe now if you're watching. So hit the um the, the the bell button so you can get notifications. Yeah. We are on. Find out when we're here. Generally speaking, you know, Sunday nights with this show, one more week at least, and then one more week. We're Woo. trying to get hey. everything out to you as fast as we can. Uh, you know, we like bringing the extra. You know, Carbonite Bounty BS, our other show, which you should check out uh, about the Mandalorian on Disney Plus, is a little bit more complicated than this because we have some more moving parts. But I think everybody appreciates that. So. You know, that's how we're moving forward on that. So it's a couple extra days. But this is Sam and Scott, our Watching Watchmen, and we are the founders of Nerdcyclopedia. We're here to talk to you today about uh, this HBO show. And this is going to be the episode where we find out all about Dr. Manhattan, right? This is the Dr. Manhattan episode. All show. about the good doctor. You know, the doctor's in the house. A guy walks into a bar. The <laughs> doctor walks into a bar. <laughs> right on into her. Uh you know, th this is a really great episode, and it's it's one in a series of origin stories that we're getting treated to right now. And it's something that a adapting a property like this, which is a daunting task just because of the complexity and the, the reverence that it's held in, it's, it's hard to sit here. If I told you I was going to be sitting here and talking about origin stories at mm -hmm. the end of the season, I'd be lying. Yeah. Um, because there's no way I think that you can you can you could see this the way they're handling this season coming. Right. Um, Sam, what was your favorite part of this episode? What was the thing that jumped out at you as being the best thing they did? So the end sequence where um, where where the doctor, you know, when Doc Manhattan, when he said to Angela, "This is the moment. Mm -hmm. This is the moment." So yeah. and she's like, "What? You know, this is the moment where you know I find out um, where you know I I know that I found out I'm in love with you and everything. Yeah. You're easily I easily I told you that there's nothing you could do to save me. You know, there's nothing that could be done. You know, yet and still you're going to go try to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. So I had no idea I was going to get any type of emotion out of this episode. Yeah. Period. Because I really didn't get any type of emotion." out of this whole series, even with the hooded justice episode, it was a sad thing, disgraceful thing and stuff, you know, everything that happened to him. Mm -hmm. Um, that was an emotional in, in a different type of way. This here sort of tugged at your heart. And if you're like, you know, uh, I guess a romantic type or whatever, you know, this whole story, this whole episode played out as like a, a, a love story in a way, yes. you know, a, 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 a monk thing, you know, a, a monk, you know, it, with it being like the origin of Dr. Manhattan. So, that the sequence, that ending sequence, starting from when she, um, when 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 she went to, um, when when Doctor Manhattan told her that they're here already, they're already here, and from all the way up until when he got descended or he got transported, you know, that was a very moving sequence with the piano that 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 uh, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, you know, the, the mm -hmm. piano, the escalation of it, it got to a crescendo to a point where you were just like, whoo, man, you know, I, I thought Angela was about to die. You know, I was like, that would be very tragic. That would be so tragic if if, if they chose, you know, to, to off her at the end. Um, but they didn't. But it was still a very well played sequence. Mm -hmm. I, I like that sequence a lot, too. And you can see that 
you know, the strength that we see in Angela all year is what right. is so attractive to yes. Dr. Manhattan. Dr. Manhattan likes his ladies formidable. He is, <laughs> he's a feminist in that way, right? Yeah, uh, I yeah, mean, except, is. of course, yeah, for yeah. the whole... I mean, you, you're, you're a god and everything, so yeah. you've got to have something to, to sort of like, you know, um, give you, I guess, reason, mm -hmm. challenge you. You know what I'm saying? You can't be, I guess, I'm not a guy, so I, <laughs> I have no idea. It's a stunning admission here on the Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen podcast. I know there's at least one person that's going to be capping that and replaying that on you. Uh, I'll make a bet on that. Uh, I, but uh, but I, 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 you, you're, no one is a guy here, but to, to, to imagine, you know, this guy, he needs something to that companion, so, so that to challenge him. To a, any good relationship needs a counterbalance to make that other person better. Mm, absolutely. And what's interesting is when you think about, and we talked a lot about this theory I have, and we'll get into that more in the speculation section, but I think that one of the things Dr. Manhattan's looking for is companionship. And mm -hmm. he's extremely lonely. And he thought, you know, nobody understands my life experience at the end of the comic Watchmen. Right. And he ended a relationship and that, relationship experientials it seems like that's the type of connection he's looking to replicate almost right a human to human connection and he tried to do that by creating life on europa uh right. and it just wasn't fulfilling for him no 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 all they could do was just like worship him and that's, that's it. basically it they couldn't really love him they couldn't they couldn't they, hate him yeah they if couldn't you, hate him right if you and, it, and this brings you know this is a philosophical question. It's a it's a question you see in political philosophy and all this other stuff, which is, you know, it's better to be, uh, it's better to want to be, in, you know, governed by someone or to want to, the government wants you to want it to govern you, right? It's easier if you willingly go along with it than if they have to make you, right? Right? Does right. that make sense? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It absolutely does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the followers uh, are made to be followers for a reason. Everybody cannot be a leader. Exactly. But so. if there's no if there's no leader except for you and, and you're uncontested, it's just not, not interesting. Well, every, everyone's a leader. Well, the mm. philosophy, everyone's a leader in their own person oh. because you have to have free will and choice and oh, everything sure. in order to do things. Oh, I just mentioned but... Dr. Manhattan like that. For him. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Not for him. Not yeah, for him. Yeah, not for yeah, us. yeah. 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 But um, yeah, uh, followers are going to be followers and leaders are going to be leaders. So, yeah. So, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the utopia he tries to create here. Mm -hmm. And the problem seems to be a problem very similar to what the robots encountered in the matrix mm -hmm. which is if you make it prosaic if you put too much it's like if you put too much sugar on something right mm -hmm. it tastes too sweet because there's not anything else it just gets bland mm -hmm. and it seems like that blandness has really i mean it's gotten to dr manhattan for sure and obviously it's gotten to our friend adrian Vite. Oh. uh yeah. This this episode recontextualized everything that's been going on with Adrian and has made it all make so much sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's so interesting to me now that I, you can see the whole arc of of his of his journey here, um, starting all the way back from the the original comic all the way up until now. Yeah. So let's look at and let's think about it for a second. Let's just look at all the scenes. Just to, and I'm not going to go through them in painstaking detail yet again. That'd be silly. <laughs> but the first one, um, it ends with the birthday cake, and he's happy. And he's excited and he says, I've just finished this wonderful play and you're going to do this play and you're going to star in the play and it's going to be great. The second episode, we flash forward an entire year and he has been doing this play with these clones for a whole year. And right. they don't get it. They won't <laughs> get it. They just won't get it. So he is just making it more and more obvious like what he's doing, right? Uh, you would imagine the very first play was probably just Mr. Phillips and, and uh, mm -hmm. Mrs. Crookshanks just standing there reading the lines, right? And still mm -hmm. never getting the lines right. Always messing up that one. <laughs> and so he just added more and more embellishment and production and more uh -huh. and more. Right. Just like, do you understand it? Do you understand it? Probably added the dolly with Dr. Manhattan in there. It's like, don't you understand? Dr. Manhattan's a person. He's a person. He's a person. He's a person. He's, a, he's just trying to grind this home. And they, at a certain point, they just refuse to understand it. They refuse to understand the truth. And this is all very aptly similar to the, the metaphor of the cave from Plato's Republic. Mm -hmm. uh, I will, again, this is even more boring than, than this stuff. So I'll just put it like this. The idea is if people don't want to know the truth and you try to tell them the truth, 
they are going to resist that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You, it's essentially, you have to be willing in order to receive information. And if you're not, right. you can't. Uh, yeah. So you have got your own blinders on, uh, kind of like a how, about how a lot of stuff that's going on in society right now and everything. Mm -hmm. But you got your blinders on. I mean, that's the hence the term blinders and everything. You believe what you want to believe because you have to believe it to keep your comfort zone. Yep. You, know, you know, keep your level of comfort because if anything else destroys or even interferes with that, you're out of your comfort zone and you don't know. And, and people, followers, are, 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 I guess, predis predisposition or whatever you want to say mm -hmm. to being comfortable. You know, people want to be comfortable. They don't want to be in situations where they're they're not in their comfort zone and they have and their their beliefs are challenged and everything. Don't challenge someone else with beliefs. You know, this is what was told to me. This is how I was taught. This is what I read and everything. So when someone actually when the truth is actually presented to you, mm -hmm. you know, you are ultimately going to reject it because you have no proof of the truth. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So uh and think about this as a as a in comparison to the biblical story of creation, mm -hmm. the Garden of Eden, where mm -hmm. the God creates the world and God creates Adam and Eve, and they are living in a consequence-free environment where everything is perfect and they don't have to change anything. And who shows up and changes everything in that scenario? Satan! <laughs> uh, Satan shows up, and Satan tempts them. And Satan, Satan says, look, this is what it could be, and don't you see your trap? Don't you see your prisoner? You don't have free will. You don't exist. You don't have a soul. And so... That is what Adrian is doing there. He's attempting to pull them along. Now, there are two things that impact what he's doing. And and there well, number one, he knows that exactly what's going on with Dr. Manhattan, right? Right. He knows that he put he's like, "Oh, I know why Dr. Manhattan's not coming back, right? I gave him the device. He must have used the device." <laughs> That's number one. Number two, Dr. Manhattan tells Adrian he's going to see his utopia realized, right? Mm -hmm. so he knows he's going back to earth so all of this like like trial and right. all of this like evidence and all of this like you know punishment and confinement right. he right. knows it's going to end eventually he just has to like sit there he has to That's sit has there to and, and 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 the the, the excruciating a part about it is that you don't know when it's going to end he know it will end mm -hmm. but you don't know you know, he doesn't know the end date or whatever. You know, yeah. he just has to wait until someone comes saves him. And he knows who that is. But mm -hmm. he also knows that Lady True is monitoring the situation. So mm -hmm. once he realizes Dr. Manhattan's not coming to help me. And remember, he knows these are just like these pe these aren't people, right? Right. They're just husks and, and, and they're not alive in any real sense right but he still has to amuse himself and yes. actually i mean you're in a situation where you have nothing else better to do you have to amuse yourself and actually i guess put yourself in a realm to where you actually may believe or think that you can make these people these these you know phillips and crochets and everything mm -hmm. into something even though he knows in his mind <laughs> that yeah. the, these babies could the, these babies can never fully grow up to actually be what he wants them to be. That's well, why he, I, I think he referenced at the end of the day, at the end of the episode, in, in the end credits, all his children are back 400-something um, million miles away and everything. Yeah. That's where all his real children are. Like, those are my because, children. Yeah, They're yeah, step because, children. And he right, treats right, them like exa stepchildren. Exactly. Those, those are people that can actually challenge him. We're going mm -hmm. back to like challenging you know, companionship and not being loneliness and everything. Those people can actually challenge him um, and he would he would feel a sense of appreciation with the love and the hate that they will give him because that's something he has not been experienced for so long because he's been dealing with these clones. And when you think about it, you know, this scene where Dr. Manhattan is talking to Adrian, and I want to talk about this scene in more hilarious detail in a second, but when he says to him, um, what's he say to him there? He says, you know, I've done everything for them. I saved them. They don't even know it, right? And he says, and Dr. Manhattan's basically like, well, these people will adore you right. and appreciate you nonstop, and they won't even just, be able just, to stop. Just and, because. Is, and, is that what you want? He said, like, yes, that's what says, I want. yes, and that's the Faustian bargain, right? I want this adulation. I don't want them to have to choose to do it. That's just because I'm do it. I'm the he, master. I get it. Adrian is so full of himself, man. It is just comedy watching him. Hey, Jeremy Irons is just playing the stuffing out of him, man. It's so he's doing <laughs> such a great job. And you know that whole the whole flashback to two thousand nine, that conversation that John and Adrian have is is so funny. 
And the way Adrian is sort of like, you know, like it seems like he's been holed up in Karnak for a really long time and he's just watching his old, like out of date TVs. He's got wine everywhere. He's wearing that like 1980s sort of like scarf tie thing right. with mm-hmm. the jacket. And, uh, and you can really see that Adrian's not doing so great and he doesn't think he, he's pretty, he's pretty soured on humanity at this point. Right. He, yeah. He yeah, do yeah. Anything what, right. what, what, what he did, you know, at the end of the um, graphic novel and everything, he screamed, I did it. You know, I did, I, you know, I triumphed and everything. And like we were speaking before, I don't think he really considered the consequences. I think he it's, it's like envisioning or, you, you know, you have this dream and you have a vision of what you want to happen, mm-hmm. you know, and you have this in your mind that, OK, if I put these events in place, this is what is going to happen. You think that you're the you think that you're the puppeteer in life and everything. So you put these, you know, events in places to where, OK, if I had these certain set of events happen, this is what the outcome in mathematics, this is how the outcome is going to be. He did consider all the math in the game, <laughs> in, in everything. So well, he, look, he's dealing with a much more vol- a volatile combination here, right? He's mm-hmm. trying to do this like social history, where he's doing like calculations to determine how everything's going to go. But he has to account for something that Doctor Manhattan doesn't: free will. Humans have free yes. will, and yes. you can't. You can lead us to water. It can't make us drink, make and for this drink. to work, make that horse drink it. We gotta be drinking for it to work. Yeah. So it's an interesting paradox. Great, uh, great, great point. But but he was so he's so full of himself. He still perceives with his plan anyway, and in some committing this atrocity. Another one. And, and, right, right, it's like right. Everything he does is an atrocity. Yes, because yes. because everything's rooted in his own hubris. Yes. So of course, it ends up in disaster because it's selfish. Which. Right. Which I think I've said, I've noted before in our in our website. So I have said that previously uh, that he is selfish and uh, yes, you did super did. selfish, right? Super right. selfish, Adrian Veidt. Uh Super. So that's essentially where we leave him, and he gets the finally the horseshoe makes sense. But remember, that scene took place three years before the action of the series. That scene took place in 2016. Okay. So seven. The, that was the, the seventh the, the cake. In credits, but the horseshoe. And seventh okay. cake. Mm-hmm. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he has three years. Three years to get from there to Earth, and it would take a long time to mm-hmm. get to Europa and back. If you were going to launch a rescue, that would be, even with Lady True's atomic propulsion technology, mm-hmm. still take a long time. So he's got plenty of time to get back. So he's just waiting on rescue now. Um, I'm excited to find out what he wrote uh, in body parts which is so insane right uh, i'm excited to find out you know what he's going to do when he gets back um how is he tied into all this how how is he tied to lady true yeah there's it's, just so it's, many it's, 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 you know and him actually interacting because we've seen him in is his show within a show you know all this time and everything it's time to get you know adrian back to earth you know to um to see exactly how you know everything's just gonna you know how he's just gonna react to everything um, all right, let, let's talk a little bit about, you know, the relationship between Angela and the doc, the yes. good doctor, which, you know, which is, uh, you know, the entire impetus, the cause for all the action on the show is this, <laughs> all of it. Uh, in the beginning we were talking, why is Judd dead? Well, mm-hmm. Judd is dead because Angela asked Will why Judd's a racist and he <laughs> was a racist. So when Will investigated it, guess what he found? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my, my uh, one of my my second favorite scene was uh, that. So yeah. she 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 she, uh, and I, I guess a question would also be too. What made her want to ask that question? Right, right, you know, right. to um to 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 um to her grandfather and everything. Um, but she nevertheless asked it, mm-hmm. and. As we, I was, I was talking about in the in the instant react and everything. Um, I don't think we've seen where Doctor Manhattan was able to communicate um, to other characters through time the way that Angela did, you know, to her granddad, well, you know, by asking that question. He did it. We, we, I thought this was an elegant portrayal of something we see in in the graphic novel, and mm-hmm. that's because in the graphic novel we see it portrayed from the perspective of the other characters. Mm-hmm. And this one, we saw it from the perspective of Dr. Manhattan. Okay. So when he kind of laughs and says, six months ago, someone asked, said I had a terrible 
uh, I said I had a, a crazy imagination, and six mm-hmm. months in the future, a friend is saying I have a great imagination. Mm-hmm. He hears that all as one as one conversation, and that laugh is him in tying both of those times together. In his right, life. right, right. He's laughing and 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 um at the same time, you know, yeah. he's responding at the same t- <laughs> at the same instance with the same reaction and everything to but to two different um individuals. You Just know, like when he's time. talking to Rorschach walking after Adrian. Mm-hmm. And he goes, I'm informing Lori 90 seconds ago. I think he says that. So this was an excellent, I thought, way to portray that idea. Uh, and it makes it very clear what they're doing, which is a nice thing about the medium, right? Because Alan Moore said you can never film any of this stuff. And turns out, yeah, he's wrong. We can film a lot of that. Like, that's another yeah. one of those little tricks yeah, you can't yeah, film. Yeah, film. yeah, yeah. Um, so Angela, you know, gets that reaction um, that she's like, ah, you know, did I cause all this? Yeah. You know, that was such a... a Regina King, oh, bless her, man. She is doing such a fantastic job, you know, in her actions and reactions and her just, you know, level acting, period, you know, throughout this series. So I definitely appreciate the way that she reacted because um, you're you're realizing that you're the cause of all this mess and everything. Mm-hmm. And you you and at, at the same instance, you're still in a in a. um you're 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 still figuring out that this this man that you're with can see time as one, you know, or see time as you know all all at once and everything. Um, but you're still reacting as a human being would, as I as I guess I would think, you know. Um, so I definitely appreciated the way that she reacted to the fact that she found out that she was a cause in this whole time loop, mm-hmm. you know, time paradox and everything. And it was after. It's almost like as soon as as soon as Doctor Man had loved her. Mm-hmm. everything clicked into place mm-hmm. like everything kind of centered around that thing which seems like it's it's the fulcrum on which mm-hmm. the entire story turns around right without yeah. that without dr manhattan loving her and interceding here well you know judd doesn't die this whole seventh right. cavalry plan there's no impetus for it because he's not hiding there lady true right. probably never comes right right into tulsa right. because right. after talking to adrian right. you know i i i honestly think that there's a decent chance that Adrian's going to here. Here's a little theory for you. So yeah. Adrian from three years ago gets a hold of lady true and says, I don't know why he's in Tulsa, but he's in Tulsa. He's masquerading. You know, that's why she knows that someone's pretending to be Dr. Manhattan. Right. 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 And, right. He, and he knows the name Angela too, doesn't he? Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. And he knows yes. the name Will Reeves, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He knows Will. So, He'd be able to send Lady True to find them, and, and they could all be sort of bound together now because Ozymandias has brought them together to try to kill Doctor Manhattan, or at least kill the guy who's Doctor Manhattan, because otherwise maybe Ozymandias is stuck on Europa, and there's no way for him to get back, and he knows that, so he's got we got to kill this guy and get Doctor Manhattan back. So, so we 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 know that um that the Adrian had um I guess the plan to kill him the first time is a plan B. Yeah. So why would this the 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 uh, ring be the plan A that he didn't use, you know? Um, <laughs> so, but but he specifically say this was my plan A. So um, we know Adrian's the smartest man in the world. That he had to have he had that Batman tendency. We we see it mm-hmm. right then. Yes, you know um, of laying out different possible um, ways of taking down Doctor Manhattan, and the the intrinsic field wasn't the only way to do that. So he yep. made he made that thing in 1979 or something mm-hmm. like that, right? So five years or so before the action of the main comic strip, mm-hmm. and maybe his whole plan was exactly what Doctor Manhattan's doing now, except to do it with Laurie to say, "Well, if you're drifting apart, you could always do this thing, and then you'll be out of the way." And yeah, it'll work. okay. But okay. he had to have the thing ready for that, and mm-hmm. then you know, Doctor Manhattan isn't gonna like knows the turmoil his relationships in up until '85, so he's not interested in that. He's like, "No, no, no. Or I I can see the end of that relationship." So Adrian couldn't use it. It wouldn't have been effective because Dr. Manhattan wouldn't have been ready to do that. Well, essentially, too, that uh, uh, um, the die actually lets Adrian know that that's his kryptonite. Mm-hmm. You know, that's super. I mean, you know, you're talking about kryptonite. I always say egos and emotions are man and woman's kryptonite. Mm-hmm. You know, men have this ego 
you know, to where they let their hubris, where we see in Adrian and oh, everything, get so full of himself well, and everything. might as well be Adrian H. Hubris. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. It's the very same thing that can take him down, just like Superman. I mean, Kryptonite is Superman, the very thing that takes him down. Just like with the emotion with females and everything, mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, their emotion can get the best of them. And can, um, despite all logic and, you know, all sense of, you know, clear tunnel vision and everything, Everything can make a point, but the emotion brings in brings them down. Just like egos with us, you know, kryptonite um, emotions with them is kryptonite as well. Um, Didot it reveals his kryptonite to you know um, Adrian, you know, in a sense and everything. So which makes um, the the um, the the ring thing a weakness, you know, uh, um, uh, a kryptonite essentially for you know Didot. <laughs> so the ring is the mechanism. Right. This is the mechanism, the device that that allows you to use this kryptonite. But uh, I would argue that the kryptonite is the ladies. That's the kryptonite. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. His it's isolation, just... his need to feel a counterpart. Mm -hmm. That's what gets him, and that's what kept him under the government's thumb for all those years. Was oh, they can provide it for Lori, and they'll give me Lori, a place yes. for Lori, yes. and I don't have yes. to worry about it. Yes. Yes. And then yes. he started. I'll drifting. do whatever the government wants me to do. Just make sure Lori's. You know, it's safe fine. and straight. And yeah, don't right. bust me for making out with a 16 year old girl. Anything, <laughs> anything but that. Uh, and so for me, you know, I, I felt like Dr. Manhattan is looking for that counterpoint. And <laughs> that is one of the reasons why I think that his deal mm -hmm. is creating another Dr. Manhattan, a companion for himself. Mm. Um, that's that's what I think the end game is here because what else, what reason would he have to risk all this, right? If it's not for something like that. So for me, you know, I'm looking at who are the people in Tulsa that are prospective Mrs. Manhattan's. I mean, just to put it like that, I don't, I don't, I don't want to make it like. You know, like that, but that's essentially what I'm talking about. Yeah, right, right. A companion for you know, companion for the God. I mean, I mean, for well, they know to pass all my Angela, of course. You know, um, mm -hmm. Lori. Yeah. You know, um, well, Lori was his first lover and everything, but you know, he's in this in, him, in this real intimate situation with um, um, Angela. So it's going to be you know interesting to see how that plays out next episode. You know. Mm. Now um, you and I have talked a little bit off 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 mic about dr manhattan and mm -hmm. i said i don't remember was this on the show when i was talking about frankenstein or we were talking about that yeah that was last um, i was on the show it's a react yeah mm -hmm. oh, well, yeah i made my own, my own words <laughs> yeah with the frankenstein scenario. i was talking all about frankenstein last night huh uh -huh. <laughs> well, I, don't got I, I, I get you i get you i get so, you so so dr manhattan is looking for the Bride of Frank. I, I I thought I found I found myself more comfortable there, and okay. I He's got an off, Bride of Frankenstein. Right. I, I got right. an off the wall option. Okay. Off the wall option. It's going to take. This is this is all pure speculation, and yeah. it's a little bit based on what we what we saw, knowing that there's you know there's some interesting stuff going on, on the internet. If you haven't read the PDPedia, read it. We'll, we'll we'll segment that off later. But you know what I'm talking about here is Lady True's daughter Bien. Mm -hmm. the memories that are being transmitted to her are once you know we, we hear about when uh the original being being primes older mm -hmm. but also we're getting information about what happened to her village during the conquest of vietnam mm -hmm. and we've discussed who do you think you know i know you've you've said that you think the comedians evolved in that mm -hmm. but I think that the real issue is that Dr. Manhattan mm -hmm. was involved in that and that she is endeavoring to kill Dr. Manhattan. Right. But I think that beyond it could actually be, you know, the companion because it could be a situation where Dr. Manhattan interacted with her back then. Mm -hmm. And because this is the same memories and the same body and mm -hmm. the same genetics for him, what's mm -hmm. the difference? Right. You know, a dead body and a live body have the same number of particles. There's no <laughs> functional difference. I found that before, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So 
So, you know, that, that's sort of my off the wall crazy thing I think could happen. I, I could get on board with that. Only reason being is because the, to introduce a comedian at this point, you know, you, it'll just be a whole nother character that you have to explain. They haven't really mentioned Dryberg by name. They haven't really mentioned any other other other, um, you know, um, characters from the Watchmen um, um, by name, you know. So, yeah, I can I can definitely appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I'm going to scratch my ear. <laughs> um, another thing I did want to um, mention. OK, so. We got, um, you know, the the dynamic between Angela and um, uh, the doctor, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the whole bar scene and everything was was pretty decent. Yeah. You know, it were it, 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 it harkens back to the graphic novel when, um, you know, he started to explain how he sees time and everything and started, yeah. you know, going over uh, going over to um, Lori on how he views time and everything uh -huh. and pretty much doing the same thing with Angela and the way Angela, you know, responds and everything. It's just, it's just, it's, it's a classic factor of you meeting the Dr. Manhattan spits the best game. You know, he, he, I, this guy, he got some mad skills and everything. He spits some game to this woman because I, I, I would think anybody else would have been, you know, up and left in, okay, this is a crazy man. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, and, 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 you know, he's dressing in blue and everything. He says he's a doctor and everything, but he really hasn't proved the stuff. So I'm going to humor him. I'm going right. to, um, 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 because I'm getting drunk, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm slowly, you know, I'm still drinking and everything. I'm going through my sets of emotions. So why not? Right. You know, and then, um, at the very end of the episode, we get a whole, I'm not going to go out with you. I'm not going to do anything. And yet, and still the doctor asks her, why don't you just you know, sit down and um, have dinner with me. Right. And she looks at him and has a resign like, fuck it. All right. You know what I'm saying? Just fuck it. You know, let's just go. You know. You mentioned something else that I want to mm -hmm. I want to get into too. And that's this whole idea that Dr. Manhattan has about the uh, egg and yeah. the idea that he could make effectively a Dr. Manhattan pill mm -hmm. and imbue whoever he wanted with right. the powers of Dr. Manhattan. With so, his consent of with their consent. He would never do that right. without their consent. So he goes in and makes waffles. <laughs> waffles he, are he got hungry. Waffles are a thing. Yeah, I love some waffles. People can eat. Mm -hmm. And he's constantly feeding his waffles to the kids and Angela. And Topher sure did make that thing of magnetic connects into the country manor that's on Europa. Mm, okay. And he sure seems to have some sort of precognition, knowing what's going to happen to his, you know, his uh, sisters, even before anything happens. Right. So, uh, you know, uh, it would seem very probable that he has been even unknowingly transmitting some of his powers to the kids and to Angela over time. To his to his family, I guess, to make sure that you know he has his companionship by the time he gets up out of his coma, or you know, if you want to call that, is that is that where you're going with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. And let's think about this for a second too. So we know that we know that Cal is the reason Angela lived through the White Knight. Right. Coming to and becoming Doctor Manhattan for a minute mm -hmm. would also maybe even give him access to his memories and tell him where the kids are and what's happening to them and when it is, and the reason they're alive could be because he interceded mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But by the time he came back, the parents were already dead. Mm. So he couldn't save them because they right. were already dead. They had already been dead. Right. But the kids were still hiding out, and he just took care of that. Uh. So with a character like Dr. Manhattan involved, they literally <clears throat> could do anything they want to end the season. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about – when I talk about like what I think is going to happen, that's what I think they're going for. Mm -hmm. But it could be any of like fifty different resolutions on something. Right, like right, right, and and essentially it might end up just being just as satisfying because that's when you it, when you put a throughout the series the 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 um specter of Doctor Manhattan has loomed throughout like the whole series and everything so far, but we really haven't gotten him until last night's episode. So for that total reveal of Dr. Manhattan, we know who Dr. Manhattan is, you know, based on like the graphic novel and everything. But um, for the for the most part, this series has been relatively grounded 
um, up until last night. We finally meet Superman. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We finally see, you know, the guy that's um that's been looming over everyone and the reason why they're everybody's pretty much just acting crazy, why the world is crazy and everything, um, because of the, you know, the good doctor and everything. So um so to to have him appear and next episode, you know, anything can happen. Um, it's basically prepping the audience to basically, I, 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 I guess you should say basically being, being able to, um, accept anything that does happen, you know, in this, um, season finale. And let's, and let's think for a moment. So the plan is for somebody to become Dr. Manhattan, for Mm -hmm. Dr. Manhattan to die. And then for somebody else to step through the door to, to Godhood. So let's think for a second about who there is that could step through that door and what effect that would have on this world. So who's in play? And this is just people that are in play that are in play. So we have joking. Joking. Sorry. I, I, I thought you said joking for a second and I was like, is he or what? <laughs> joking. <laughs> joking. Just joking. So that's the, I mean, he could be a red herring just because of that. Right. right. Uh, so Joe King could become a Dr. Manhattan. I would imagine that the effects of that, generally negative probably uh yeah, he seems to be negative. you don't really want joe becoming um the good doctor or a doc with the powers and everything no, no. he <laughs> seems to be at best best amoral uh right, so right. no joe uh, okay so not joe I, I guess like given hitler you know superpowers you don't want that to happen and let's assume <laughs> absolutely right no it's a bad idea and let's assume anyone else in the seventh cab would be an equally knuckleheadish thuggish person but less smart Let's just okay. say that would be the difference for the rest of them. So on that side of the ledger, uh, putatively, is, of course, Wade. Mm-hmm. Looking Glass is out there, and if yep. he, could be, and he could become Dr. Manhattan. Oops. And if he did, he would probably end the hoax around 11-2, tell the truth, and probably punish Adrian really bad. Oh, yeah. That's my oh, guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's like, you know, for torturing me and traumatizing me for all my life and everything. Oh, you got to get it. And let's not forget that it sure seems like a lot of people are coming to Tulsa that are named Adrian Vite. And <laughs> if you're uh, someone that uh, would really like to murder him, worse places to be, of course, uh, than in Tulsa. Um, Lori- are, are, are we thinking, okay, come in. Is that what that lady, is that what happened on that farm? Um, with uh, the rocket coming down, is, are we thinking that that's Adrian right there? It could be because it could be what happened. Uh, we don't know how long before that was. That was a weird transition shot where it all, a transition from the field to like the the cultural center and the Dr. Manhattan booth. Okay. So I, I'm not sure if that was a literal like time transition or a space transition. Okay. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent. It definitely could be that that was Adrian, but if it were it would mean that he probably would have launched himself way before that, right? Mm-hmm. So, Adrian would be aiming for Tulsa, right? So the whole reason he shows up in Tulsa could just be like, that's because that's where I was trying to get. <laughs> and he landed on this farm, and they knew he was going to land on this farm because he wired ahead the coordinates. Right. And maybe it has, you know, <clears throat> what if he brings back a clone, one of these Dr. Manhattan people? That would, be, possibility. that would be extremely valuable. Yeah. It would be extra Phillips, and, Phillips and Crookshanks, they, they got his back and everything. They wanted him to get to horseshoe, so why not? So when I hear her say mine, mm-hmm. it could, that's what I hear. I hear yep. that there's something weird. These clones are coming to Earth, and, you know, they don't really – they're they don't really have – they're almost like, like robot, like android helpers, you know what I mean, from a standpoint of – like if you got if you had a a bunch of robots like David from um, Prometheus, right? Okay. Like the household robots, so it would almost they would almost function like that if you had a whole like mess of them, right? Yeah, right. That's kind of what the, how they act uh, on Europa anyway. Um, who else could be Doctor Manhattan? Laurie could turn into a Doctor Manhattan. No, uh, that's a possibility. Laurie is very familiar with what Doctor Manhattan can do. Understands his history better than anybody. Mm-hmm. It would make sense if she were to become the companion of him because she was with him previously and choosing to come back to him would be interesting. Plus, I mean, let's not forget. She's a touch nostalgic about certain aspects of her younger life. Right. As, as amplified by the big symbol. 
Yeah, the 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 big blue, big blue is what we'll say. Excalibur, <laughs> Excalibur, right? Excalibur, you know. Uh, so that is a, a symbol of her longing for her youth, and, and also and also it's a dildo. Uh, Angela, of course, Angela would be a f- fierce, a pretty fierce Doctor Manhattan. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I think she would definitely, you know, she might be a really good option because she would understand humanity. Yeah, she would understand, you know. Because she's a police officer, so she understands what motivates us to do good and do and do wrong. And, and and plus, I think she's the best at understanding the doc. You know, Lori, while she she convinced him to come back to Earth, um, Lori wasn't as understanding of the doctor's, you know, um, um, of of his of his sense of self and everything. And I think Angela is a much better listener. She's a much better active recipient of the doctor being a doctor you know what i'm saying the doctor may have yeah, absolutely i think she's also like you say angela's angela's able to t- talk to dr manhattan mm-hmm. don't i mean Lori got dr manhattan to come back to earth but remember it wasn't mm-hmm. something she said it was right, something right. she was was right she right is a thermodynamic miracle miracle she mm-hmm. didn't convince dr manhattan so much as say you know, this is my dad, and this is, and he's, and he goes, whoa, right, 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 Your and and, your- and and that scene of love, of which he seems like he's infatuated with, which seems like you know maybe that's something that is just, um, it's just eluding him because it's something that he can't control, it's something that's out of the element of time and everything, but it's something that still fascinates him. And he's looking for it, which is really a great metaphor for anybody looking for love, which is what we're all looking for, you know, in a in a in a big, you know, um, uh, metaphysical way and everything. Um, looking for that moment, looking for that one and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and he got that seed from what happened with um, um, the comedian and um, Sally Jupiter, you know, um, and what the thermodynamic miracle that that imbued Lori, that that made Lori and everything. So. He's in the future, you know. He's he's writing in and now and everything. So you know he he meets Angela, and that just smacks him over the head. So this is what this this is what love is. Well, let's look at let's look at the reasons that he's with his partners. You know, Jenny Slater mm-hmm. is there. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I in my opinion that's and, and the stuff a... that we're referencing, guys, is in the uh, Watchmen graphic oh, yeah. novel. So, so if you haven't read that, then you're probably very confused. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> step one: go to our playlist. Scott, Sam and Scott are reading Watchmen. Watch those. Oh, You'll, get it. You'll get it. We um, talk about it. We have twelve episodes that talk about each issue. So in you know. depth. Mm-hmm. I recorded several of those from under a blanket. Don't tell anyone. Uh, <laughs> it made this sound better. What can I say? Uh, those primitive days back then. Um, so, so yeah, we're looking at his, um, so Janie his, Slater his, hmm? yeah. was there. Right. They didn't really have a connection. It was almost like a relationship by default. Mm-hmm. And so he turns into Dr. Manhattan and she decides, you know, they decide to go permanent, but you, you know, does, he's not into her. Right. right. It's just, right. A, it's just convenient. Right. It's just, she's around. She's the only girl in this, in this giant research facility, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Lori, what's Lori bring to the table? Well, Lori is attractive. Mm-hmm. And yep. when they get together, all of the things that Dr. Manhattan says about her are about that she's attractive and that she is younger than uh, right. Janie and that she oh, is physical. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's she's pedestaled, right? Mm-hmm. He, he sees her as an object. Mm-hmm. Angela's not like that. No, no Angela, no. this is a romance. This is a romance of the mind. They come in and, and she titillates him because she's uh, smart, smart. And she can mm-hmm. spar with him and mm-hmm. she can tell mm-hmm. him, no, mm-hmm. that yep. is probably something that doesn't get out very much. <laughs> get out! I won't do that. You know, right. he and so you see the progression here. And, yeah, yeah. And almost... The progression of him as a you know um, a person, and also the progression of um, just his uh, sensibilities and just development as a as a god. Mm-hmm. If you want to say that, he's maturing. Yeah, mature. Which... <laughs> Which, which we all weird. do at some point, right? Yeah, which we do, or we, we which is to be human, and that's the weird thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's a it's a sort of a turnaround from the Doctor Manhattan we know from the end of the story of the novel, who's lost a lot of his humanity. Right. It seems like when he re embraced his humanity, and he had incredible difficulty duplicating free will, 
he realized, <laughs> oh man, humanity has more to offer me. And so he had to leave his boring recreation behind. And, and, and who realizes at the end credits at the end there when he talks about um, all his people? Uh, Mr. Ozymandias. Yes. Mr. Ozymandias. He, he has to go back to see his children because mm-hmm. they'll... they'll uh, My children. All uh, the... they're, they're, they're both two sides of the same coin. Will you Him stay, Master? Mm-hmm. No. Will you stay, Master? <laughs> no. Will you stay? No. You know. Uh, they, they 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 won't let him leave. You know we won't let you. We won't let you. You know we already had another master abandon us mm-hmm. and everything. You're not going to do the same thing to us. When your big blue daddy went out for cigarettes. Oh, so funny. I I love everything about the the contempt that Adrian mm-hmm. holds them in once he realized their limitations. Right? <laughs> Would you like it to occur to me so? Oh, <laughs> that whole. You know, yeah, the, the, from the very first episode, you know, he holds that contempt, and we're just like, "Wow, he is growing." And we, 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 we see his impatience yep. and his contempt right from the very start. And as as the com- the comedic thing about it, as we were knowing who Adrian is and why he, um, you know, what he did, the horrible tragedy, you know, the horrible, you know, horrific thing that he did, we're laughing at Adrian because he deserves it. Mm-hmm. In a he, way, he's the worst. This is, yeah, yeah, he's a prisoner of his own body, worst. and he thought that this was going to be a paradise for him, but it essentially ends up being a prison, which is what he said. He only brought the things he brought with him. These people that he's with did not have pre-existing notions of who he is. They didn't know anything about him. They don't have an ability to not trust what he says. All the information that they have about him, he had to have brought with him. There's no way for them to know it. They wouldn't. So. Mm-hmm. So he 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 must have been ranting about this for years. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Can for you years. imagine? You know he he's on his pulpit and everything. Guess what I did? Look what I saved humanity and everything. And they're just like, okay. What's he say? Should like, I get with, you another horseshoe? Yeah right. He's like, with your will. He's looking at Mrs. Crookshanks. He's like, with your will, with your lives, I will escape. Right. He says that to her. Uh, awesome. I, I I think that the way this has been constructed yeah. is. You know, very, very very well thought out. You can, I think, the rewatch on this season is going to be excellent because it feels like there's a, there's other puzzle pieces to slide into place, but it's going to be like real satisfying. The the, the, the framing of it, because I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to bet it. We read that graphic novel again mm-hmm. and binge watch, you know, the um, whole season, you know, right after that and everything, so I can get a full, complete story of you know the whole arc of everyone. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's going to it's going to be so pleasurable to actually do that. Um, let, let, let's talk a little bit about what what, um, you know, some of these PDP files and everything. Yes. So <laughs> if you if you want to stay, you know, if you're a stickler for only staying in the media, you can go ahead and skip the next piece here. Uh, let me make this easy on. everybody. But if you love looking at us and listening to us, we encourage you to stay on. OK, yeah. hold on a second. I'm going to make this easy on everybody. Okay, okay. I'm going to put this up. It's Pedipedia. <laughs> and I'm going to put it down here. And when we're done, I will take that away. So if you scroll ahead in the video and that's gone, you're good to go. But uh, All right. So, yeah, this perfect. is, um yeah, if you haven't read the files and everything, it's from possible speculation, spoilers and everything, yeah. which we'll go into. So just tune out now and yeah. then we'll see you next episode. But it's all canonical and it's not spoilers because we don't know what's going to happen. We, only we don't know what's going to happen. Right. Just speculate. So this really, week, really good speculation, though. <laughs> so this week, the PDPedia files are wild. And it's because the date they start on is four days after the last update or tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So the, the PDP files is dropped. It's Dale PD talking about the book fog dancer, which I knew was going to be a bigger deal. The first time I saw that thing, uh, in that, in that book, Max Shay, our friend, and, 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 you know, was, for readers of the graphic novel, he was a very important character. Yes. You know, from that, um, from that book, very, very important character. Um, so, Fog dancing is a big deal, and Dale Petey is writing about this the day after Dr. Manhattan got shot by the Tachyon Cannon. It's the next morning. And what he says is there's been a catastrophe, and things are bad in Oklahoma and uh, in Tulsa. There's hazmat crews. The city's on martial law. Multiple people exploded. Uh, you know, Lori Blake is still missing. So 
all of this is going to happen the night of September 25th. And that means that it's already happened. Mm -hmm. It has not happened to mm -hmm. us and it is still going to be happening and will be happening in perpetuity on the episode, which once is released, will be able to be replayed by anybody at any time forever. Right. <laughs> so what they've done with this, with just the framing device that they're using for the PDP files is created a situation in which the, it, the consumers of the art are experiencing time the same way as the protagonist of the art. <laughs> so we are experiencing past present and future simultaneously mm -hmm. the way dr manhattan does except we can't change what's about to happen we can watch it we can experience we can watch it, it but yeah we yeah, can't change yeah. It. right right because right. it has exactly. it's both happened already mm -hmm. and is happening all the time so it's almost like a reward for those who have kept up with the pdp files you know these past eight episodes congratulations kids you, thank you. you get to you get this experience that would be impossible in other media and with other characters uh, I, I haven't seen this done in any other media, really. No, I have not. Game of Thrones would probably be the closest, but I even in then it wasn't, it wasn't, it, it wasn't like this. It didn't court this sort of intensive rewatching that I right. think Watchmen's going to court. Uh, one of the reasons that I've been glad we picked this media is that it does have this complexity, and it mm. seems to be unique in that way where there's more to say. Um, that's something well, I'm it, real thankful it, about this whole time. It, it, it was a real gamble. I mean, just uh, I mean, we'll get more into the PDP files, but it was a gamble because we didn't know how this show was going to turn out. Mm -hmm. You know, we we did we started you know the review of the twelve issues and everything, and we know how in depth and complex and and satisfying that experience was. So mm -hmm. them coming out with this TV show, we didn't know how it was going to play out. It could have it could have been a disaster. Right. You know, it, this was this was. You know, hindsight and everything, it was a great, it was a very great decision on our parts to, to choose to do this, you know, because it's such been a real, you know, rewarding experience, you know, going through these, you know, through these episodes, meeting these, can these new characters, you know, that we now care about, Angela, uh, Looking Glass, you know, um, some of the, you know, extras of Petey, you know, Agent Petey. We mm -hmm. know Agent Petey, you know, even though he hasn't been featured much on the show, we're seeing all his stuff and everything yep. that we follow, so we act... We feel like we know his character, yep. you know, for the for the as a reward for those who've been keeping up with these PDPD files. And you know, the speculation you can go anywhere. I, I want to talk about you know I love these artistic flourishes. We talked about that uh, symmetry chapter a lot about how we liked how they could do more than one thing at the same time while making their point in a unique way. And PDPD file number two is one of those things and just to explain what i mean by that uh dale says i wrote a summary of the book fog dancer mm -hmm. and the deal is nobody can write a summary everybody's summary of that book is different and his got last place in a contest last place <laughs> last place now he found that review summary in wade's house mm -hmm. and he reproduces it mm -hmm. so the way we find out about the plot of this book and the terms used in the book is through the worst summary <laughs> of the book as voted on by the experts in that book mm -hmm. who would have a journal. Mm -hmm. So the, go check it out. There are so many parallels to what's happening in the story right now, not just right. to Dr. Manhattan, the super soldier, but to, to, uh, to will um, things that are happening to Angela. Right. Uh, it's all, so excellent. What, what 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 did you think of the the section? It was a couple sections in there. One, what did you think about the section where he was talking about an insane, angry guy or whatever talking about making five um, acts in a play? Mm -hmm. You know, what what did you think about that reference in in, in his um thing? And we what we know what 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 um what Adrian you know in relation to that in the, in the very first episode. How do you think that that connects? I, or I it does. I think that she, I mean, Adrian knew this guy, mm -hmm. right? I mean, Adrian knew this guy. He hired him and it was because he wrote stories like this. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that, that that's all, all part and parcel to how this all works, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, you know, Adrian knew him. So he felt a camaraderie. Adrian with his... knew, Adrian knew, um, Shay. Oh, Shay. 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 Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. I okay. think that there's a lot of stuff in there. I, I think that Dale Petey is definitely a lube guy. 
I think that. Oh. I think <laughs> is that's, there a doubt? <laughs> there's not a doubt on my mind. S S S P S P P of S P F six sixty six. Yeah. <laughs> this is all very. You know, the author th that Shay reminds me of is Thomas Pynchon. It mm -hmm. feels to me like that's exactly who they, this is. And Thomas Pynchon is a postmodernist writer, and I won't go into too much detail because I'm sure everybody else, including our previous uh, guests, <laughs> could tell me more about this. But it, basically his deal is investigations that go nowhere and just are are crazy weird, right? right. He, he These books have, like, weird characters that show up as, like, a British invasion band, but they're not British, so they all talk with a British accent, but they're from, like, Petaluma. Uh, and weird stuff like that, right? Um, so Thomas Pynchon is the type of guy who would write all these crazy novels and say things to you like, if it comes out in my uh, on the paper as good as it is in my mind, it'll be the greatest thing ever written and make it stick. So Thomas Pynchon is uh, who I think of when I think of Shea, right? Okay. okay. Uh, so this postmodern ideal is something that would matter then because Shea is the postmodern writer and part of what postmodernism is is this disjointure where everything is weird and every story that you get is subjective and told from a weird spinny way, right? So things happen out of time and out of jointure and you get information on weird conflicting things. And that's exactly what the fog dancer seems like it is. It's a story within a story within a story within a story within a story that, that and I won't spoil fog dancer for you, I guess, but, but that the main character wakes up from. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is he, how much of this is real? Is it all the wizard of Oz um, or not? And the end of it, he picks up a gun and that's mm -hmm. how the story ends, right? Mm -hmm. Holding the gun. Mm -hmm. So what's he going to do with the gun is very subjective. So you could read that. And, and the, the reason you read it that way is he could be killing himself or he could be killing the nurse or anything like that. I think I lost him. So I'm going to stop recording for a second here. There he is. Lost Got you for it. a second. There we, okay. There we, there we go. So, um, go ahead. So, you know, uh, so this postmodern ideal could be, mm -hmm. is expressed here and it's, it's Dr. Manhattan. Mm -hmm. It's Doctor Manhattan. So here, here's how, here's how it's that guy's Doctor Manhattan. So Doctor Manhattan may die or may live. He can't see, right? He can't see what's going to happen to him. He just sees darkness. So that is exactly like the man holding the gun. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know what's going to happen with it, but he knows he's holding it. Mm -hmm. So someone's going to get shot. It's either going to be himself or the nurse that nursed him to health, Angela. Or mm -hmm. his old partner, mm -hmm. Lori. Mm -hmm. So the Fog Dancer script about the Super Soldier is, in every respect, a parallel of Doctor Manhattan. In addition to being the you know the counterculture esque sort of novel of of right. history, right? And I also took it as a meta commentary on Watchmen itself. Yes, you know this is this Fog Dancer is the Watchmen in this universe. Mm -hmm. You know. So um, that's what I, I, I sort of took from that based on, like, you know, the descriptions and everything in there. So that was a um, um, that was, you know, it clearly subjective. But that was my um, thinking of it as well as, as far as being meta. And what's it like? You yeah. know, you have all this trauma and mm -hmm. you put on your mask and you go and you make the world <coughs> brighter. But you get grimier all the time. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. it's the same thing that Silk Spectre One was saying. Batman tendency. Batman tendency, right? Getting grimy out there. Um, you know, he's out there trying to save the world, but it's ruining Bruce Wayne, man. <sighs> His whole character and everything. Oh, Bruce Wayne. Hates him alive. Hates him alive. Oh, he, he's happier as being Batman and putting on a mask and being Bruce Wayne. You know, so it totally kills that character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to talk about how happy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ozymandias was to see Dr. Manhattan. They're calling each other friend. You know, it's almost like Adrian doesn't feel like anybody else could possibly understand him other than Dr. Manhattan. Right, 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 right. Well, he says, uh, you know, other than you and a few other a few others, it's notable that he didn't name any names and everything, um, that, that they're the only ones that know exactly what happened. You know, he killed Rorschach, mm -hmm. you know. I'm going to take he, um, Wikipedia down here. We're done talking about that. All right. Yeah, you know, Welcome back, um, everybody, that... Did what I said, which is nobody, but <laughs> oh, right there. Um, I think it was it something I wanted, something else. I, so, so we already mentioned Lube Man and every, um, yeah. so okay. Um, all right, so um, I just lost my train of thought. What was um, Adrian doing? 
because clearly that was a misdirection based on their conversation. What the heck? What the heck is he doing? What's he doing in Karnak? Yeah, dropping squids on people, man. Like I don't. Uh, that's my so, who's so, dropping so squids. Was, who's dropping the squids? So so was that a squid generator and he was just transporting them to, into different? He was just teleporting oh, squids. Oh snap! So so that was the, that's what the, that's what the why the map was there. Yeah. So he was dropping squids on <laughs> in different parts of the world. Yep. Really? Yep. And so that wow. and that was ten years ago. Wow. But we know squids are still being dropped. So somebody's taking that over. Uh, who knows who? Uh, somebody's uh, dropping squids on okay. on everybody. Who knows if they went away for a while? It seems like maybe they went away and they came back. You know that oh. could be an explanation for for why there's so much interest in it. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of a lot of directions to go. I'm interested in <laughs> I'm interested in looking at these guys, thinking of these guys like a, a pantheon or or like the like Mount Olympus. And Doctor Manhattan is obviously the creator. He's mentioned his he's got electricity. She calls him Zeus, so he's Zeus. I think that Adrian Veidt thinks that he is Hercules, <laughs> but he's really Loki. <laughs> he's a trickster god. Mm -hmm. He seduces us with promises of a bright tomorrow and tricks us into doing things for our own good. Mm -hmm. So he's Loki. He's, he's a prankster. Mm -hmm. If you were to boil this down, if I were to have to explain the plot of this to a caveman, I would have to say he's a prankster god, like Ky okay. or like Coyote from all the Native American myths, right? Right. Uh, he's it's something that's prevalent in essentially all mythology, mm -hmm. and it's interesting to see him sort of he's coming to the realization that that's what he is, right? right. I think that's part of what's what's happening is he realizes that he's a trickster, like that's all I have. I I can't come back and I I don't have a way to move move everything forward because I already played the trick. Right. Uh. That's, that's, I know one thing. I, I know he needs to get himself some because he's too preoccupied with other people's stuff. You know, got, got to, uh, Adrian needs to get him some. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, you know, um, as any guy knows that you know, if you haven't had something for so long and everything, your brain, you you just go crazy. Weird things happen you know? in prison. Oh. <laughs> oh man. So I I'm excited to see where. Or this one yeah. goes. Obviously, this is uh, coming to the end and not being able to see the ending is special. Uh, yeah. It's not something you get very much. It's no. the fact no. that we're saying that about an adapted property is important to mention. I think. Well, the, the, would you re would you really consider this an adaption or or a continuation? Well, is is adaptation or a continuation? It's a continuation from a story perspective for sure. Yeah. But the fact that these characters were pre-existing. Right. And we okay. still don't know what's going to happen. It's not being, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like there's yeah, no book yeah. readers anymore, right? Like No, no, that's no, gone. no. Every everything is just out there so to 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 take this all this complexity it is really a great testament to, you know, Damon Lindelof and his writers staff and everything to put this material out there and bring it to like the masses especially for those of us who, who know the, the graphic now, which, you know, along with Alan Moore, we thought could never work, you know, in a, um, in a, in a, in a um, you know, in a film, filmable format. So this is proven that um, even though he didn't exact he adapt the work, you know, the original work and everything, he took all, he took, uh, the, he took the spirit. Mm -hmm. He really did take the spirit and actually um, made it into something that much more greater, yep. you know, um, if you if if you if you can even if he can stick this landing if they can stick this landing on this um um you know on this in on this this final um episode here you know I will say this is probably the the most perfect series I I I, I I'm not gonna even put that out there so we'll we'll see when that <laughs> we'll see when the episode comes out but the enjoyment I've had for these past eight weeks talking with you mm -hmm. talking with our um you know viewers and oh, everything yeah. Oh, yeah. you know it's it's it's, it's been a pleasure man. And it's been a pleasure, uh, you know, developing this show with you over the course of the last year or so and, you know, getting to to have this conversation in depth on a regular basis with people, uh, audience members that have come in and shared feedback and contributed yes. so much. Guests, yes. guests yes. that have come on our show yes. and contributed so show. much uh, of their time. Um, 
And what I'll say is this, if you like what you've seen, if you like what you've heard, keep your eyes stuck on this feed here, uh, either whether it's on YouTube or on your podcast app, wherever you're getting it, more contents to come. Um, right now we're just getting it all lined up. So when the weeks are going to be, but you can expect to see more content from us on a weekly basis, even after the end of Watchmen. Yep. So make sure you are subscribing. Make sure you do click notify. You can get exactly what we're talking about, uh, notified right away. Um, but if you're and even, yes. And even, even, even though Watchmen is ending uh, as, as the, um, the title it says is nothing ever ends. So right. we are not ending. No, you know, after this, there's more media for us to do. We've got already, we just were talking about our plan for the, uh, inter between seasons, some exciting stuff, some exciting stuff for sure. Uh, you know, you can still keep your eyes peeled here for our carbonite bounty BS podcast. Um, star Wars episode nine is coming out here in just a month. Um, I'll tell you right now, uh, we're planning on talking a little bit about Christmas movies, uh, do a little Christmas special, uh, just a little one, not too big. I'm not going to make Sam be on here for an hour talking about Muppet Christmas Carol, although I could, <laughs> I 100% could do that. I'm not going to do that to him. Um, yeah, so yeah. We'll keep your eyes peeled for that. And, and there are going to be some more Watchmen yeah. content and everything because we still got, um, you know, the Doomsday Clock stuff to go over. We still got before Watchmen stuff. Well, we still got, you know, some content with some other guests who are, are, are really just coming on, you know, the Watchmen train and everything want to get their, you know, perspective. So we still got some 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 um, Watchmen content. It's going to be it's, it's still going to be a lot of Watchmen stuff to go over even after this ends. That's right. We may, we may even do character deep dives. You know, each each character we can go through deep dives of, you know, their personalities there. <laughs> it's got it's got eyes lit up as far as that. So um, going all the way back from the comedian, the very first person that we meet in Watchmen, all the way up until, you know, however this ends, you know, the last character. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of it's still a lot of stuff that we could still dissect and deconstruct in this universe. There sure is. And Sam, I'm just so excited that we're finally yep. here on the precipice of the finale. And remember, yes. live after the show, put it right here on this channel. You can catch our live instant reaction and we'll be here to talk about the, uh, the show then. Yep. So, yep. uh, that's all I got. Make sure you subscribe. That was not a question or a suggestion. Subscribe. I don't want this to get violent. I am not a violent man, Thanks. Nice. but I can Scott do, give you, Scott will give you what I'll give you the business. If you don't subscribe, there we go. I didn't want it to come to this, but it has. If you continue not to subscribe, <laughs> I'm going to give the business to everybody. And I know how many of you there are. There you go. Tell all your friends, folks. <laughs> We're super nice. All right. Uh, signing off uh, from for the Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen podcast. I'm Scott. And I'm Sam. We'll Thank you guys for listening and watching. We'll see you later. Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen is a production of Nerdcyclopedia Transcontinental Podcasts. Nerdcyclopedia.